My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was ASAP Adonai on piano. ASAP, what song was that? That is a song called The Bugaloos. Nice. Yes. That's cute. <laughs> I feel like a bugaloo today. Yeah. Well, if, you got, if you're feeling like a bugaloo, you might as well stay inside. <gasps> and Why? Uh, well, the weather's just looking all sorts of rainy today. It is uh -huh. currently 41 degrees outside, 70% 70 70 chance of showers. It's likely that it's going to start raining any second, any minute, any time, part of today, throughout the week. And even this weekend as well. So uh, get your raincoats out, people. It is uh, fall time, and uh, the rain keeps on falling. It's very true. Nice, guy. Yes, it is. fall is upon us, and um, it's going to be a rainy weekend, as Scott just told us. Yep. But I've got a couple news stories for you guys. I think the funniest one I found today, and uh, my personal favorite, is about poor Edie Sims, who's 102 years old and was recently arrested at her retirement home. Good. Because she wanted to be. I guess it was on her bucket list to become arrested. She's 102 and she'd never been arrested before. And so the cops are, were very happy to uh, handcuff her and put her in their squad car and bring her downtown. Well, she's never arrested in her home. Never. 102 years. years. Yeah, so she wanted to. Um, and so my favorite quote of this entire article was the very last line. I just want to read it to you guys. After her first ride as an outlaw, Sims decided to swear off a life of crime. She joined the rest of the senior center, center residents for a game of bingo. <laughs> I know. I thought it was funny. So Edie Sims is an outlaw after 102 years old. You go, girl. And then my next one is, I'm sure you guys have heard about it, but Hurricane Matthew. So Hurricane Matthew has just torn through the Caribbean and really did a lot of damage. And I get, I just read something that it killed actually 11 people. So this is a really intense hurricane that's coming. And so it's yeah. coming up from the Caribbean up into the East Coast. And so I'll show you guys a photo. I got this from weather.com. And so this is kind of where he's coming from. The purple, you can see the Bahamas and up through Florida and South Carolina, North Carolina. And so it just said, um, I read an article yesterday, so this is what I've got for you guys. So Tuesday afternoon, Governor, Governor Nikki Haley said that a complete evacuation of the entire East Coast and the state of South Carolina. So 100.1 million people are going to uh, be evacuated. So they want them to get 100 feet away from the, 100 feet, 100 miles away from the coast. Um, so, yeah, and so all the schools are closed, everything, businesses are closed, and there's a full evacuation, wow. and they're starting that today, and they announced that yesterday. So that's very scary. Um, very I know scary. there are a lot of photos from it down in Florida and lots of uh, pictures, and a lot of people are having their photos, you know, people waiting in line for gas for like 30 minutes and buying lots of water, and they're actually signs saying out of gas in the gas stations. So that's one thing we don't have to deal with up here in Montana is that it may be like negative 45 degrees, but we don't have hurricanes. No. And we could kind of deal with negative 45 because mm -hmm. we're all prepped for that. Yeah, and then so in North Carolina, um, he is, there is a declared a state of emergency, but it doesn't look like they're doing any evacuations. Yeah. Uh, but all of their schools are closed. Everything is pretty much closed. So that's really scary, and that's just coming up. So uh, well wishes down there to the East Coast, and I hope that everyone gets through it. Yeah, so I, sometimes yeah. I, I think that a lot of times um, a lot of governors just like the idea of calling a state of emergency. I think they do. I think that's kind of like they just wait for that, they, that their red phone to ring, and the president is like, "Yes, Mr. President. Don't worry, Mr. President. I got it all. <laughs> all I got it all figured out." <laughs> it's on their bucket list. Governor bucket list. Declare state of emergency. Oh yeah. Use national guard. <laughs> I think I think the only state of emergency in Montana is from fires, uh -huh. and then of course our crop seasons. Yep. We've had some interesting crop seasons in the last couple of years, especially this year because uh, the barley field was completely decimated by hail mm -hmm. like a hundred percent there wasn't even like a one percent of barley like a, a stick of barley that was left to make a glass of beer one of my friends was working has been working on a farm all summer long and uh the farm that she was working on at the towards the end of the summer during their harvest season when we got that big hailstorm that hailstorm ruined a bunch of their crops and yeah. it ruined like twenty thousand worth dollars worth of damage and they had to actually call that like state emergency and yeah. like agriculture department and declare like state of emergency. Yeah, I mean, for it's, their farm. it's declared a state of emergency when it's crops crazy. are ruined. Yeah, I didn't know that. 
Okay, and then so my last trending news story that I found is so I was telling you guys about how uh, there have been all these really scary clown sightings and like clowns threatening people and like trying to lure children. So now it's in Great Falls. So now in Great Falls, there is a page called Billy the Clown, and this guy, whoever Billy the Clown is, has been like writing down people's names and addresses and saying like, you're next, you're gonna be a victim. So that's really scary. So that's been going on. And so the Great Falls Police Department took to Facebook and write, wrote a post about, you know, like, don't talk to clowns. If you're a clown, don't be violent. Things like that. It's not illegal to dress up as clowns. No, so it's yeah, not no. illegal to, like, dress up in costume. But if you're doing it to be violent towards people, then that is illegal. Yeah. So now the weird clowns are in Montana. So be on the lookout, you guys. Well, yeah, because there was a story. I, I don't know if you guys heard about it, but there was a story in... Um, some other place where they cl they shot a clown. Oh, they did. They shot him right in the head, mm -hmm. and um, from what I hear, last I heard it was in critical condition. Wow. Well. So it's just like. It's just very is threatening. It like, is it? Uh, are you asking for it or like exactly. what is it? Uh, exactly. That's it, how it, I it's feel too. It's such a weird thing because clowns are supposed to represent happiness, but then of course now you get this trend going on here, and now I, like in the beginning. I, everyone thought it was like a Rob Zombie thing because Rob yeah. Zombie is making a movie about yeah. like evil clowns or whatever. Or so like a it could be thing. a promotional yeah. thing for that movie It. Yeah. Remember It? Mm -hmm. it the remake in the movie It, and the whole idea is it lures children to their death in the movie It. So it's really kind of bad, especially at the state that um, the world is in right now. Just luring children in general is like a huge just, taboo. It's just a weird like thing. Like not if it, not like it was always not a taboo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Be aware of those clowns, you guys. And who's ever started this? That's really freaky. Like, why would you do that? Okay. Yeah. Clowns are just scary in general. It's a but viral marketing turned into a real life crisis. Very true. Yeah. So, um, you can find out more information about that on. Yes. So, I found my stories on the Great Falls Tribune on the Today website. And I found my last story on weather.com. Yes. And of course, you can find out more information of Wake Up Missoula by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write up twice. Please, please listen to our podcast. It is wonderful, and I'll be changing it pretty soon. So, you guys, I don't want you guys to miss out. It's an awesome uh, podcast with uh, Jack and Mason Catmull. So, you can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook, and to find out more information, just check us out at MCAT.org. Yep, and of course, uh, for you, those of you who don't know that the uh, Dune 72 is well and pass, um, the premiere is 5 p.m. this Sunday at the Rock City Theater. So, and you have to be, you have to arrive to uh, receive prizes. Nice, yeah. yeah. Another announcement is that today is this first, is it the first Wednesday, Wednesday of the month or the second Wednesday of the month is our orientation? It's orient the first Wednesday of the month. So oh, no, no, it's the second Wednesday of the month is our orientation. So a week from today is our orientation, second Wednesday of the month. So you guys can come in at 5.30 and Scott here will show you, or Christian, it's gonna whoever's going to be here next this week. This is my day to work and next Wednesday is Christian's day to work unless he doesn't show up you, and then it's my day to We work. could show you all the ins and outs of MCAT. You could come on, make your own show just like us uh, whenever time you want to. You yep. can do it live you can pre-tape it so if you want to come in second Wednesday of the month next week we'll yep. show you all about and that. Cole Johnson from our wake up sports wants to do like a yeah. full sports show mm -hmm. rather than just a segment on our show of course I think he, it's great and he, he he told me that any way he can get as much exposure as he can he's gonna yeah. do it so I was like here you go yep <laughs> I think it's a great idea I can't wait to see that but we have a very exciting um, new programming happening tonight on MCAT and without further ado this is what you guys can check out primetime MCAT channel 189 this is our 11th year of Pet Fest. It's our third year at the Adams Center. We're really enjoying having it inside so that we can have better temperature control. Um, one year it was over 100 degrees, one year it was raining, and one year it was so smoky you could barely see in front of you. So at the Adams Center we don't have to worry about that. Um, and it's such a better environment for our shelter animals. We put on Pet Fest to help um, promote shelters and rescues and to teach about responsible pet ownership, spaying and neutering, and being aware of where your animal came from. But we do it in a fun environment by having contests and the Wacky Wiener Dog Race. And we adopt out about 90% of the animals that are brought to Pet Fest each year.
he did such a good job. Actually, oh, I, I can't tell. He did a great job. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys. So it's Wednesday. This is what's going on in your community today. Uh, first, I've got some classes for you guys to get your fitness on and get active. We've got pole fitness over at Mask Studio. That starts at 9 a.m. this morning. Um, and that is located at 1200 Shakespeare Street. And then we have Introduction to Coraline. That's going to be at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. That's at 9.30, uh, located at 310 South Curtis Street. If you guys want to get involved in that um, or want to show up or find out more information, you guys can give them a call. 549-8765. Then we've got some yoga. That's going to be at the Learning Center at Red Willow. That starts at 10 a.m. It's only $12 to drop in or you can pay $40 for four weeks. Located at 825 West Kent Avenue. And then we've got some exercise for the little ones. Taekwondo is going to be over at the Children's Museum of Missoula. That is put on by Championship Training, and that starts at 11 o'clock. And then we even have a little workout session for our tiniest ones. Preschool Playgroup is at 11 o'clock. That's going to be for ages walking to five years. They set up different activity stations around the gym, and this is at Roots Acro Sports Center. And so parents and children get to choose and rotate what they want to do. And then we maybe slow it down a little bit with some Tai Chi. So we go over to Learning Center at Red Willow with some Tai Chi with Lynn Roberts. It's only $60 for a six week course. It's from 12 to noon. If you want to get involved from that, it is 721-0033. And it's from 12 to one, not 12 to noon. That doesn't make sense. And then we go over to the public library for our middle school writers. This starts at 3.30. This is a writing group for grades 6 through 9 to get some good feedback, eat some chocolate, play with words, you know, stay out of trouble. At the University of Montana is a new business showcase. It starts at 4 o'clock. It goes until 7 o'clock. It's on the third floor of the UC. And so what it is is that you can support new local businesses. Uh, it's free admission. They have $30 headshots, coupons, and giveaways. So it's pretty much just like a networking thing. At the Downtown Dance Collective, they've got a ballet class. It starts at 5. It's going to be a doll ballet class. Um, so it's going to focus on the elements of ballet that are truly useful in their, our daily lives. Strength and conditioning, uh, balance, grace, and alignment. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they have an introduction to Pilates reform. It starts at 5.30 today. Um, it costs is 55 bucks. It's going to be held at Alpine Physical Therapy. And it looks like it is on Wednesdays. Socrates Cafe is at the Missoula Public Library at 6 o'clock. They are going to, uh, they're returning this month with the theme of philosophy and the Obajwa. I don't know if I pronounced that right, uh, but it meets in the boardroom. <laughs> at the Public Library, they've got the Changing Image of American Indians in Film. It starts at 6.30, so this is a discussion. And so what it's about is um, Humanities Montana speaker Richard Ellis uses film imagery to show how Hollywood has depicted Native American Indians. Yeah, that should be very interesting. That'll be in the large meeting room at 6.30. And then at the Women's H Club Health and Fitness Center, it starts at 7 o'clock. This is for ladies only. Sorry, fellas. They have a Recharge and Reignite Dance Party class. So um, it goes October 19th through, oh, no, no, no. They have in-depth sessions. Okay, so starts at 7 o'clock, starts tonight, um, and it's $40 for members, $55 for non-members. And they just, like, dance and... I don't know, do some workout stuff. Sounds great. We've got some music. The Double Mix 3 will be at the Woman Theater tonight at 7 o'clock. That's Bluegrass, and they are a great band. And then we've got Country Dance Lessons with instructor Kathy Clark at the Sunrise at 7 o'clock. Uh, over the Top Hat Lounge, they have their Jazz Night with Trio Noir that also is at 7. And then the Roxy Theater has a movie. It's called Escape from New York. Um, it starts at 7 o'clock. So this has got Kurt Russell in it. So any movie with Kurt Russell, you know, it's got to be a little cheesy. So it's pretty much about a war between the United States and Soviet Union. Um, and so the entire island of Manhattan has been converted into a giant maximum security prison. Oh, my gosh. So then, you know, of course, Kurt Russell has to, like, he's a former, <laughs> he's a former special soul. Special Forces soldier turned criminal. Ah! Um, so he has to retrieve the president in exchange for his own freedom. <laughs> of course. Duh. It wouldn't. That's of course how it works. Yeah. So that sounds crazy. That's going to be at the Roxy. Uh, and then we've got some music tonight. Dive Bar Daughters will be at the Center of Selena at 830. We have a karaoke contest at the Eagles at also 830. Uh, karaoke at the Bad Lunar at 9 with Milk Crate Wednesday at the Palace at 9 o'clock. 
and then it looks like we've got karaoke at the sunrise at nine and then over at stage 112 they've got a couple bands um it's 18 and up but if you're 18 and up you got to pay five bucks they're gonna have ranges sun razors mido skip and that's at 10 o'clock so that's what's going on in your community so far today for your Wednesday. We're switching gears now. We are going to Musical Notes with ASAP Adonai. Okay, I'm just doing a flyover here because our guest here has some amazing accomplishments. I'm going to start this out by saying, if you were to look under the dictionary and look up the flash, <laughs> you would see our guest on today's Musical Notes. Once quoted as saying, if you want to run as fast as the men, you have to train like the men. Our guest is the fastest woman of all time in history to this day, Florence Griffith Joyner, known to the world as Flojo, and there she is. <laughs> her her um, star didn't last very long because we lost her at the age of 38, but in her 38 years, this lady accomplished an awful lot in the world of running in the Olympics tell you a little bit about her. Now, she was born in 1959, known as Flo Jo. She was an American track and field athlete, considered the fastest woman in history, based on world record set in 1998, both in the 100 meter and the 200 meter, which still stands to this day in 2016. And uh, during the 1980s, she became a popular figure in the international track and field because of her record setting performances and her flashy personal style. She was known for having long fingernails, long hair, wearing metal around her neck. Not the gold medals, but you know, like just jewelry and stuff. And just smoking, folks. I mean, you know how like when you watch a, a track meet and they're like close, almost neck and neck? Mm -hmm. Well, this lady would be like ahead of the whole herd. <laughs> That's how quick this lady was. And also, she attended the California State University Northridge in the California, I mean the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And as a child, she was so fast living out in the country that her father would have her chase jackrabbits and she was quick enough to catch them <laughs> as a child. So that gives you an idea of, of the promise that this lady had. And some of her accomplishments, she finished, well in one, in one Olympic event she finished fourth in the 200 meter at the first world championship athletes in 83 but by 1985 she hit her stride when she won the 100 meter IAAF Grand Prix, Grand Prix final in a time of 11 seconds and this lady was so popular she was ranked second in the track and field news in 1987 world rankings and they also, um, because of her success, it led to a deal with toy maker LJN Toys for a Barbie doll in her likeness. So I guess if you're a little girl and you have a Flojo doll, that could be pretty encouraging. Oh yeah. And of course, your, your audience can look up more things about her. She just set record after record in world championships like in 1987 and um, just the entire 80s, she hit her stride. And she'll go down in history as probably the greatest female track star to this day, the fastest woman in the world. And I will stop on that note. Nice. Thank you very much. I love her nails. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was known for that. She had these big long nails and she'd get out there and then run like the flash. And she didn't need to do anything but run. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, she was born to run. But we have a whole bunch of new PSAs for all y'all because, uh, Voting's coming up, and um, uh, our very own Ron Scholl made a whole bunch of PSAs with the Missoula County um, Voting Office. So here is a taste of one of four um, PSAs. Check it out. This light. Hi, I'm Kate. Did you know that you can vote before Election Day in Montana? Just come down to the fairgrounds between October 12th and November 7th to get your voter registration completed receive a ballot, and even get an I Voted sticker. If you have changed your last name, moved, or had any other update to your personal information, you'll need to change this with the Elections Office in order to be eligible to vote. Some of the perks of visiting the Election Center before Election Day are plenty of parking, friendly staff, speedy service, and even extended hours on Saturdays and evenings. For more information on our hours, please visit MissoulaVotes.com. It takes less than five minutes to complete everything that you need in order to be election ready. Visit us anytime to quickly receive your ballot. 
If you can't find time to stop in before Election Day, that's okay. Montana also has same-day voter registration. I have to warn you, though, we're expecting a record number of voters this election season, so the lines are going to be really long on Election Day. Save yourself the hassle and come in before November 8th. Coming down to the fairgrounds is a great way to avoid lines on Election Day. So why wait? Don't register late. a lot of um, momentum, especially with voting nowadays, because uh, they're using um, voting as kind of a viral marketing campaign now. A lot of the, you know, registered votes, and there's so many organizations that do it. Uh, even so funny, um, I saw a commercial where uh, uh, even astronauts can vote. Ah. That, that PSA, have you seen that one? Uh -uh. It's uh, where uh, th they get pinned. I voted a uh, little pin. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the air, and then they, they go, Whoa! <laughs> and then I thought to myself, he's like, so that's why they have stickers instead of um, pins. Yeah, because of astronauts. Learning. Thanks, astronauts. Yeah. So that's the thing I wanted to say <laughs> as we go into our Thursday events. But wait, stay tuned. If you stick with us, we'll do Hallmark or Bullmark right after this. Hi, guys. We've got some events going on for Thursday. So, up first, over at the Children's Museum, they have magic noodle art that starts at 11 a.m. So, it's amazing foam noodles that stick together like magic. So, they'll create all sorts of crafts using that. At the Mask Studio, Mask Studio is a, I, you know, I forget what it stands for right now, but they do a lot of aerial silk and a lot of aerial arts, as well as lots of alternative fitness classes. But they also will do Pilates and yoga. So they've got a Pilates and yoga class starting at 11 o'clock, and that uh, starts tomorrow. Learning Center at uh, Learning Center at Red Willow has meditation for veterans that starts at 1:15. It's an ongoing class. It's free for veterans, their families, and ca caregivers. It's going to be located at 910 Brook Street. There are computer electronics in the makerspace at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3 o'clock. You can work on a project of your choice or just choose what you want to do. Lego Club is also at the Public Library. It starts at 3.30. And then across the street at the Insectarium, they're feeding that crazy spider, Rosie the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula, feeding her at 3.30. And then at the University of Montana in their gallery in the UC, there is a gallery opening. There's a show by Shelby Hansen. It starts at 4 o'clock, and that is free and open to the public. So hopefully Rick will give us some um, art clip regarding that. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a sewing class for families. Um, so that starts at 5 o'clock. It's going to be from the 6th until the 20th of October. If you guys want to sign up for that, you can call 549-8765. Then at the University of Montana in the Forestry Building, room 301, there is a um, Backcountry back country Hunters and Anglers Speaker Series uh, that starts at 6 o'clock. It'll focus on waterfowl hunting and calling strategies. And then over at the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got their Hero Sound Project that starts at 6 o'clock. It's a veterans music group. So it's created to get veterans playing music and all, you know, come together and camaraderie and yeah. So no experience is necessary. It's free of charge for veterans, their families, and caregivers. And their weekly jam sessions are located at 235 North 1st Street West in Missoula. That's located on the north side. West African Dance Class is at the Barn Movement Studio at 6 o'clock, um, and that's an hour long, and I don't think it costs very much to do it. They don't have a price. The Good Food Store has got a hands-on ramen class. It starts at 6.30. It's only 35 bucks. And then at the Montana Film Festival at the Roxy Theater at 7 o'clock. Uh, oh, yeah, the Montana Film Festival started. It's at the Roxy Theater at 7 o'clock. So the Montana Film Festival are movies that were made. They're dedicated to the exploration and celebration of film as art by using cinema and its intended gathering place, the theater, to warm our spirits at the campfire of the silver screen. Isn't that so poetic? So Montana Film Festival started. It's going to be from October 6th to October 9th in Missoula. It's going to be all at the Roxy Theater. So if you guys can take a look at their website, right here so montanafilmfestival.org um, and over here they've got about the program schedule passes yeah filmmakers and delegates so today for friday or thursday <laughs> where it's wednesday where am i <laughs> okay so this is going on for thursday tomorrow it starts tomorrow thursday 
Uh, at 7 o'clock, there's a movie called Tana. It's about a young woman who runs away with a man she loves to avoid an arranged marriage. Uh, villagers wrestle with preserving their traditional culture or adapting it into the increasing outside demands for individual freedom. So that'll be at 7. And then they have another movie starting at 7.15. It's called A Sense of Accomplishment Short Film Block. And so it's new short films about getting the job done, sometimes against all odds. So that'll be at the Roxy Theater, um, kicking off the Montana Film Fest at 7 and 7.15. So you kind of have to choose which one you want to go to. Um, but just go to montanafilmfestival.org to find out passes and tickets and things like that. Or you can just show up to the Roxy and really figure it out yourself. Yeah. Um, and so that's going to be all weekend long. So tomorrow I'll, or what, Friday I'll have some more movies for you guys. Uh, and then Thievery Corporation is going to be playing at the Wilma Theater at 7 o'clock, their electronic music. And the Real Rock Film Tour will be at the University of Montana. That's also 7 o'clock. That's going to be a, in the third floor in the University Center Theater. And a Real Rock Film Tour is just a bunch of movies about rock climbing all across the world. Um, so if you're into that, that would be perfect for you. And then my last event is going to be a tap dance class at the Downtown Dance Collective. This is for adults. It starts at 7.30. If you guys want to register for that, you can go to ddcmontana.com. But that's all I've got going on for you guys. As always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent, and the Missoulian for more events. Um, I usually get all of my information from MissoulaEvents.net. But now that Scott is back, Back we from where? I was always here. Yeah, you sure were, Scott. <laughs> okay, so um, we do have homework of homework, but I do want to show an art clip featuring oh, the Missouri Mercantile once again. Uh, and, of course, you guys can check this out at the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. And when we come back, we'll do Hallmark or Bullmark. Stay with us. So now we have Hallmark or Bullmark, and I was told before a show that I would get a kick out of this, so yes, I'm will very get a kick excited. Out of this, as ASAP would say about everything. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a good introduction by saying this is Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> hmm. So now I know what a microphone tastes like. Anyways, I, do. I know. Don't touch my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> my germ. Yeah, my <laughs> Anyways, uh, hit it ASAP. Sarah is a barista at one of the best small town cafe spots in the nation. When the owner dies and leaves the shop to the one who can come up with the best pumpkin spiced la latte, <laughs> Sarah sees this as her chance to come into her own. But when Bryce, her ex boyfriend, jumps on board, things begin to heat up and not in the way they expect. Wow. And the movie's called Spicing Things Up. Hallmark. <laughs> Or Bullmark. Hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna say Bullmark on this one. I I'm going you. to agree. I'm going to agree. Yeah. yeah I because think of the pumpkin latte. Yeah, the best. Yeah. 
Are we right? Yeah, you're right. Yes! It's Full yes! March. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know at home how the game works, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys have to <laughs> determine whether or not it's real or fake. And in this case, it was fake. It was a fake All right, movie. Are you but ready I would for still watch that. That sounds hilarious. Some spicing things up. <laughs> yeah. Let's, well, let's spice and things up a little further. Things begin to heat up and not in a way they expect. Not Ooh. the way they expect. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways. Here's the next one. When the only pumpkin patch in town accidentally grows squash instead of pumpkins, what? <laughs> it's up to Thomas Harrison, the town's Mr. Fix-It, to come up with pumpkins in time for the big town harvest. And with a little help from Nancy Jones, the local baker, they will find a new way to celebrate the pumpkin harvest. And the movie's called October Squash. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Is this a Hallmark original movie, or is this Fullmark? I would call Fullmark. I'm going to say Hallmark. You're going to call Hallmark? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, ye of little faith, Noel. Um, and you're right. It's Fullmark? It is Fullmark. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, Scott had way too much fun with these this time. That's really I weird. almost said that, too. I should wow. say, I should say, you're going to really enjoy these every single time. Yeah. You would say Fullmark every single time. Every time. And I just do all Hallmark versions. Yeah. <laughs> But of but course, one of the ways I do it is I rewrite Hallmark original movies too in my own words. Well, you were Even just, though the the original writing synopsis is always so ridiculous. So you were just so excited about these. <laughs> I knew you created these. Well, I mean, I get excited. Pumpkin Pie Wars is a legitimate movie that I'm excited to go check out. Pumpkin Pie Wars. That's that's the, <laughs> that, was the that was last week's movie. That was last week's Hallmark oh, movie. Come on, Noel, you can't remember no, no, it. You're killing me, Smalls. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks. I can't wait to watch that either. Yeah, end of the show. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it is the middle, middle of the week. Uh, I, got a, I got a chance to see Dweedle's Apple last night. Yeah, tell and us about that. And it was really good. It was really nice to watch. And uh, it, I, I wish I could have gotten, like, a quick little recording of his, you know, like, his explanation of why he chose the title. Um, and so tell us. It, it, he uh, basically... Uh, uh, he basically said he just wanted to deal with the legal um, crap, mm -hmm. so he um, he just decided to change the name to um, uh, something else. Dweezil Zappa plays whatever he wants to. Yes. Yeah. And so that's <laughs> before that, it was just like Zappa plays Zappa, uh -huh. and then um, and then, uh, then the next title was uh, Dweezil Zappa plays um, um, music from Frank Zappa, mm -hmm. and then you know he, he it was his siblings. His siblings had yep. their cease and desist. Yep. Even though it's like they have no interest in music or yeah. whatever. It seems like um, most of um, Frank Zappa's family is very business savvy, mm -hmm. more business savvy than musical savvy. Mm -hmm. And Duido is like one of the few ones who actually took to music as mm -hmm. uh, heavily as his father, Frank. Yep. And, and he so doesn't look a thing like him. No. Like, not at all. It's like, I, you see all these thing, videos and stuff like that. Of, like, you look at him and he, he as like, I, if he was just walking down the street, I just think of him as just some punk guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just some mm -hmm. regular guy. Yeah, so I guess like a little sibling rivalry yeah. involved ended in a uh, legal issues. Yep. Uh, Duido didn't. Um, Duido uh, shredded our guitar the whole time. I don't think I heard him sing once in, really? the, in the whole thing. He he wouldn't sing, and he had a uh, a, a guy who uh, basically sounded exactly like Frank Zappa. Oh, the and voice he was and singing. Everything. He was doing a lot of awesome. Frank Zappa parts, and then he had two women, um, two two young women um, playing and singing. And cool. Performing. That sounds it was, great. It was pretty. It was pretty good. That's awesome. Sure. That sounds really fun. Well, tonight I'm going to go to the Double Mix 3. Uh, oh, I'm really excited about that because they are bluegrass, but they're so much fun. They're like, I'm going to say, like, not just like your traditional bluegrass, but the kind of bluegrass where you're like crashing beers around and stopping your feet. Nice. It's really fun. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm looking forward to that. And so I'll give you guys all the details about that on Friday. Yeah. And it's, the, the audience was pretty good on the behavior. Not good. too many people. There's one person who's going side by side and touching me. And it was just like, you're doing one dance move the whole entire time. <laughs> he was like doing that the whole time. It was just like, okay, Scott, settle down. what are down. your dance moves? And my dance moves like. Scott doesn't dance. I, it's <laughs> not of approval. I like this. I'm just all over the place. Yeah. But I'm short. Like, I'm little. Like, it's easy for me to like snake through the crowd and dance around. Yeah, there's only like a few drunk people, which is pretty surprising for, you know, like if they have alcohol, there's always like the drunk person. It's like, and it's always like, oh, people are drunk at this thing? It's like, <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised. They serve alcohol. I'm gonna crash some beers around tonight and I'm excited. Yeah. Looking forward to it. But that's in like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get through our day first. Yeah, we have to get through our day. 12 hours, yeah, it's like it's 18 totally hours. Fun. No, oh yeah, it's almost nine, so it's about that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man, I, I'm like at six six in the morning time in February <laughs> right now. Uh, but of course, you can be 
um, not 6 a.m. and you can go to our website uh, and it's <laughs> anytime uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice to meet you at twice and now it's even longer um, <laughs> you can also like us on Facebook page you can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter you guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula you can like us on Facebook and to find out more information and to watch our channels you can just go to MCAT.org yep. and orientation is exactly one week from today at 530 you can sign up and you can make your own show and we can teach you how to uh, edit and make a nice little video for your project and it, it's only um, limited to your imagination. It's very true. Yep. Yeah. So of course you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. Or if you're too scared, you can, you can email us mcat at mcat.org. So uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Rams. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noelle McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai and we'll see you guys all on Friday.